Hey guys, welcome to Return Refuge Farm. My name is Jess and today I want to talk to you a little bit about gardening zones. Over the last few days, I feel like every gardening group I'm in has been a buzz with the announcement of the new Department of Agriculture Plant Hardiness Zone map, which effectively just reassigned like half of the United States in new gardening zones. Because a lot of people are fairly new in gardening, sometimes there can be misconceptions around these things, which can lead to confusion and people making decisions that maybe aren't best for them. And so today I wanted to just do a quick video kind of teaching about what a gardening zone is and what the reassignment of that means for you as a home gardener. So the first thing you should know is that the United States is actually primarily the country that uses the hardiness zone map. I have seen um, multiple like English gardeners kind of reference their zone so I think it's something that has sort of been adopted there uh, but there are a lot of places that are very large countries and large areas full of gardeners that they don't use zones. They don't talk about that and that can cause confusion for people because sometimes people put a lot of emphasis on zones um, that I think is probably relatively unnecessary. Of course, I'm primarily an, a vegetable gardener, but I'll get to that. Essentially what your zone is, your plant hardiness zone for the full term, is um, it is a, an assessment over essentially the last 30 years of weather records that denotes the average low temperature in your region. And the hardiness zone map is just showing the, the country and it shows what zones are where and it's 100% based on the average low temperature. So I am in the Midlands of South Carolina, was just assigned firmly to be zone 8. I'm right up the line of like 8A to 8B now. Previously to this reassignment, um, I was right at the line between 7B and 8A. Uh, before living here, I lived in Arkansas where I was also 7A to 7B. There are people who live in Oregon that are in the same zone as me, people who live in Arizona that are in the same zone as me, and the people in Oregon may have snow on the ground when I'm putting my tomatoes in the ground because zones don't have anything to do with the length of your growing season. It does not have anything to do with your first and last frost dates. Those can be drastically different in two regions that are the same zone because the only thing that zone is actually talking about is the average low winter temp in your area. So in cases like vegetable gardening, uh, if you're doing annual gardening, it really doesn't matter at all what zone you are in because you are starting new seeds at the beginning of each growing season you're planting those things out and then you're growing them for a season and then as the plants die you're tearing them up um, and then you're starting again fresh the next year so the average low temperature is not going to affect that the biggest thing when you're talking about edible edible vegetable gardening is when your first and your last frost dates are and that's what's going to tell you when you need to plant your frost tender plants. Now it is the hardiness map, the hardiness zone. So if you're growing perennials, that is where your zone plays in. So if you watch any like ornamental gardeners on YouTube, they're going to heavily emphasize what your growing zone is because for an ornamental gardener, if you're planting shrubs, if you're planting perennials or anything that you're planning on leaving out over the winter, you need to know if those plants can survive the average low temperature in your area. So here in the Midlands of South Carolina, what our new assignment is, Zone 8A, states that our average low winter temperature is 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit or like negative 12 to negative 9 Celsius. And that's pretty unusual for here. Last winter, we had um, a very, we had a very unusually cold snap where it got down to like 11 or 12. Um, we've only been here for two winters, but the previous one, the coldest night of the entire winter was 23 degrees Fahrenheit, which according to the hardiness map would actually be zone 9A. So it really isn't about any particular winter, it's about the overall average of the last few decades. Now for a person who's attempting to grow food, where this is really going to apply is whenever you start looking for trees, for if you're planning on having perennial herbs and things that you leave out, asparagus, rhubarb, all of these things. And a lot of perennial things can actually withstand a pretty cold winter without dying in the ground. They'll come back, they'll obviously die back to the ground 
everything on top will die back, but the roots will stay okay and live again another season. I've seen a lot of people sharing this new mat, being like, what does this mean for me? What can I do differently? And I wouldn't actually suggest trying to do anything that differently. If you've been gardening for a few years in your area and you're finding out what works for you, like you should look at your actual experience of your weather versus a mat, because even within a zone, you can have microclimates, you can have colder freezes. My particular property, though I'm now deemed officially zone 8A, when I first moved here, I bought a lot of citrus plants that were supposed to be fine in 8A. We had that really cold winter, and even though I'd put the citrus plants in the high tunnel, um, it got so cold that it killed all of them. At, now, my property is at a low point. It does get a little colder here than it does in surrounding areas. And I am even still, even though I am now officially firmly in the zone 8 on that map, I'm still going to, when I buy perennials and plants and trees, I'm going to err on the zone 7 side of things just so that if there is an unusually cold winter, I'm not out a lot of plants. If you are shopping locally and you're going to local garden centers, for the most part, uh, garden centers are going to stock according to your zone. So like when I visit my friend Matthew who lives in Ohio and I go to garden centers there, I'll see all of these plants that I've never really even seen before in person because they don't even sell them here where I am. It, it doesn't get cold enough in the winter for those plants to thrive or it gets too hot in the summer for those plants to thrive. The garden center stocks for local sales. If you're buying online, now there are a lot of plant options and places you can shop online. Um, many of them will have an option to sort your plants by your zone so that you don't unintentionally buy something that's gonna be killed over your winter. It's best for you to really know your zone for that application. It really doesn't matter as far as any annual gardening goes. And if you're just made of money and you wanna you know, spend money on plants that aren't gonna last you more than a year, you can. I mean, you could buy plants that can't survive your winter and plant them out and enjoy them for that year, but they're essentially just gonna be annual where you are. And there are certain things that here in South Carolina, in warm, balmy South Carolina, I can plant and will be perennial here in my garden that if you live in zone four, zone five, if you were to plant those same plants in your garden, they would be an annual for you, whereas they're a perennial for me. All perennial means is that it lives through the years. That's what that, that name actually means is, is through the years. Um, and annual obviously means one year. So it is important to know your zone, especially if you're gonna do any sort of landscaping and things that you're hoping are going to come back year after year. That's just not a one and done situation. But I hear Hear people a lot going hey what zone are you I want to know if I can follow you along with you and I'm like I'm teaching you to plant tomatoes like you can follow along with me no matter where you are because tomatoes are annuals most places now there is one other thing that you will hear in reference to zones people will talk about season extension so I'm in my high tunnel right now and people will say things like a high tunnel adds a zone to your growing season or people will grow in high tunnels and then they'll put plastic frost fabric over the beds inside the high tunnels and they'll say for every layer of plastic you get another zone and i think i get what people are saying i think that it causes confusion because essentially what they're saying is is that for every layer of protection that you get you're adding you know five to ten degrees fahrenheit to your average low temperature because this high tunnel is going to protect my plants by about five degrees and, and when it gets really really cold it still freezes really hard in here but it does keep the wind off so yeah i would say that it consistently adds at least five degrees of protection to the plants potentially up to 10 degrees of protection if it's sunny and then if i were to put frost fabric on top of that it would add another five to ten degrees so when people talk about protecting it one zone or it adds two zones they're really just talking about those increments of temperature measurement that are discussed in the zone chart now i like to experiment and i like to try things meaning i will probably get some more citrus plants maybe i'll try some in my glass greenhouse where i can protect them a little bit more and add more warmth to the average low temperature maybe i'll try planting some outside and seeing if maybe the acclimation will help them live through something like a hard freeze or i could plant them outside and if i know i'm going to have a hard freeze go wrap them up in frost fabric there's all kinds of things that you can do uh, as long as you're willing to take a risk of it failing and to me once you decide that you're willing to take a risk of something failing it doesn't really matter what a map says 
overall, it's good to know. It's good to know what the charts say. It's good to know what the maps say. But ultimately, it doesn't need to be the bottom line of deciding what it is you do or who it is that you learn from. And anything that you read on paper, on a chart or a map or anything like that, highly advise that you do not take that as like a black and white hard and fast rule that tells you you cannot do something. Uh, because I think with determination in, in the garden, you can do a lot of things that charts and maps will tell you that you can do or that you shouldn't do or that won't work. Sometimes they're right, but you really don't know until you try. So that's it. That's my little piece on what's going on with that reassigned zone hardiness map. I have to admit, I was, I was a little surprised that it reassigned everyone to show that the winters are warmer than they've been in the past because my experience here just in the last few years has definitely been that the winters have been colder than they've been in the past um and i like to watch ryan hall y'all on youtube he does a lot of weather analysis i think he's very accurate and, and very good to watch and you know i mean he's even predicting that this winter is going to be be a pretty cold one and last winter was really cold the year two years before that when we were in arkansas it was record-breaking low temps so for me i'm not going to do anything different i'm still actually thoroughly treating my garden like it's his own seven garden and the things that i'm choosing to put in it and the way that i'm choosing to protect them is anticipating colder temperatures than what this new map is saying that we're going to have if i've got experience hands-on in the garden and somebody gives me a map that tells me otherwise or a chart that tells me otherwise I'm always gonna air with my experience because that's just wise to me so that's my piece thank you guys for hanging out with me today I hope it helps you if you have anything to add I'd love for you to comment in the comment section um, that we can help new gardeners who are really wrapping their head around stuff like this thank you for hanging out with me today I bless you until next time